Good morning. It's Sunday, October 23rd. Anthony Amore, Republican candidate for state auditor, is our guest. Let's go on the record. He's the only Republican running for statewide office who has the support of Governor Charlie Baker and former Governor Bill Weld. Will that make a difference maker? The candidate is here. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR. I'm Janet Wu, along with New Center 5 political reporter Sharman Sacchetti. Thanks for joining us. Ed is off this week. Anthony Amore is our guest. He's a Republican nominee for state auditor, an internationally recognized expert on security issues. He worked for the Department of Homeland Security, rebuilding systems at Logan Airport after 9-11. He now works as security director at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum and has been written best-selling books on art theft and fraud. A candidate for Secretary of State in 2018, he holds degrees from the University of Rhode Island and the Harvard Kennedy School. Thanks for being here. Two weeks until the election. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yep. Well, this week, you criticized the current state auditor for not auditing the Cannabis Control Commission, which failed to catch a death at a cultivation factory. If elected, should you be responsible for a major crisis at an agency that you did not audit for more than three years? Well, I think uh, if I'm elected, I will be uh, uh, responsible for agencies if they're not audited. So it's the responsibility of the auditor to look at every agency every three years. And if you haven't looked at an agency and problems are found there, then you have a lot to, uh, to uh, answer for. So you should be, do you believe you should be held responsible for that? I think you should be held responsible for not getting the job done that you're, you're uh, elected to do. Um, what's the first agency or department that you want to audit if you get elected, and why would you pick that particular agency? Without question, the auditor's office itself. The auditor's office is failing to meet its mandate. Um, the current auditor said about 30% of agencies aren't being uh, audited uh, in, the, in the prescribed time. That's a real problem. So the first thing before an, an auditor's office can be effective looking at other departments, it has to be effective in general. So I'll take my experience building compliance and enforcement programs, leading big teams to um, rebuild the office by auditing it first with truly independent auditors, not a team that will come in uh, from an organization I belong to, but rather uh, an independent team who has experience in state auditor's offices, looking at it from top to bottom, fix those problems, <clears throat> and then second part is audit the unaudited. But that sounds like it's going to cost more money that's in, than is in the budget right now. How do you convince Democrats who don't really necessarily want to be audited mm -hmm. to give you more money? Now, I don't think it'll cost that much money. Uh, it's been done in the past. It just hasn't been done effectively. I think that if you bring in the right people who are experienced in this field, can, they'll be able to find the problems right away. The current auditor said one of the issues is um, attracting uh, employees in adequate numbers to get the work done because of what they're paid. And I think that this is something that would be brought to the legislature, but I think it's completely affordable. All right, what new ideas, new procedures would you initiate in order to make government more accountable and transparent to voters? Well, I, I love that question because that's the key, right? So the auditor, his job or her job is to make government accountable to the taxpayers, not to the auditor, him or herself. So one of the first things I would do is build a website that people can use very easily to find information about the agencies they interact with, to find out when was the last time they were audited, what problems have been um, found there. So if they're finding the same problems, they can go to their legislators and say, this is a recurring problem, this agency, we need to do something with it. I've been using this motto that where there's light, there's heat, and where there's heat, there's action. So if the auditor's office can shine this light on problems, it'll translate to government action at the legislative level. The second thing I would do is I want to really streamline the way audits are done so that they're more useful to people. Because in its current state, and this is not an attack on our current auditor, but audit, auditor uh, offices around the country, a lot of times they focus on writing long reports to get filed away. I want to take these reports and go out to the people rather than waiting for the people to come to me. <clears throat> I'm going to continue to go to neighborhood radio shows, television shows, local media, um, so that people in communities can hear about the specific things that affect them. Um, you said that you would like to audit the auditor's office mm -hmm. first. How high up is the MBTA on your list of uh, agencies to look at, considering the fact that the federal government already has got a spotlight on them and is looking at them very closely, as is the legislature? Well, 
uh, transportation is a major issue and it's very high up on the on the list and I would say um, despite a bad situation we have a little bit of an advantage in that the FTA came in and did their work and these people are specific experts in that field. You so know. let them do it instead of you jumping in at this point? You know, then, then use this work as a starting point because they're the experts and then come in and say we can do supplemental inspections based on their findings to make sure that corrections are being made. That's, that's a great scenario for the taxpayer. Your opponent was on the show this la last week and she proposed the state auditor offer quarterly reports on the state's tax collection so there's no surprises at the end of the year like there was this past year when refunds, a huge refund, are due to uh, taxpayers. Do you agree with her? Do you think quarterly reports are necessary? Well, the Department of Revenue is already producing this, this, uh, these um, numbers, and the governor will tell you they were giving these numbers to the legislature. So when the legislature came out later and said, we were taken by surprise, and this was a sneak attack, that's just not true. The numbers were there, and the Department of Revenue is producing them. I, I think that's a bad excuse. So it's no need for the auditor to do it. Is that what you're saying? I don't think it's any problem with the auditor doing it. I think it's a responsible thing to do, but the numbers were there, and it's being done. Democrats have dominated the Massachusetts Auditor's Office for eight years now. 80. Are you, I'm sorry? 80. Eight, dec eight, eight decades. 80 years. Excuse me. 80 years. <laughs> so are you confident you have the cooperation of Democrats, especially since you wouldn't have subpoena power without going to court? Well, I, I mean, the court is a, a venue, and it's a, a usable mechanism. It's a branch of our government. So I wouldn't be concerned about having to use um, uh, the courts. That's, a, that's part of the office. I think that um, not only has it been uh, controlled for 80 years by Democrats, but for the last 40 years, it's essentially been two auditors, right? So you haven't had a lot of change. You haven't had a lot of innovation and new ideas. I think I bring an entirely different perspective. Last night, Governor Baker mentioned, you know, that if you go back in history, you'll find that the auditors going back decades have come from the legislature. In other words, the auditors haven't come from a field in which they've done auditing. I present this unique opportunity where I've done audits and investigations and assessments. I've led large organizations. So I will come into this with a professional eye rather than having to learn it on job on day one like uh, my opponent would. Do you, do you feel confident in the audits that have been done over the last decade or so? I think that the auditors in the office, the employees, do a good job. I think they do their best. Again, they're generalists for the most part, so they have to dabble into things they might not be experts in. But I think that the office hasn't been managed uh, in a way or funded in a way that allows them to do their work at the, in the best interest of the taxpayer. There hasn't been any real concerted effort by the Democrats controlling that office to raise the budget. So we are budgeted at about half of what comparable states budget their auditor's offices at. We need more money in that office and I, I go back to my uh, um, point about... And when going, you talk about the budget, what does that tell people? Well, it tells people that there might not be an emphasis on finding waste, fraud, and abuse in Massachusetts. And that's why I'll be a vocal advocate for ensuring that that sort of work goes on. That's what people want. You know, it, if the legislature is underfunding the audit, who's the chief accountability office, that sends a message. I want, I want the taxpayers to know this. So you are going to have to go to the legislature to get more money then, which yes. is what I yep. asked you a little bit yes. earlier. And how do you convince Democrats to go along with this? I think you do it um, primarily by going to the people and explaining to them what's not being done, what we can't accomplish on your behalf because of the budget, and putting pressure on their independent, I'm sorry, their individual legislators uh, to, to bring it up to leadership. Okay, we'll have more with Anthony Amore. And yes, the pop quiz when we come back.